Oh, I'm quite high up. I didn't realise I was this high up. Oh, wow. I'm Youssef Rafiq, and I'm a zoologist and former zookeeper. I've spent years working with animals, so I know how tough, but also rewarding, it can be. But now I want to try some of the more unusual wildlife jobs out there and meet the dedicated people behind them to find out if I have what it takes. I'm on my way to meet a bat expert who spends most nights monitoring urban bat populations out here in the UK. And I'm going to be spending 24 hours with her and her team as they go about on their mission to protect this often misunderstood creature. Hi Morgan. Hi Yusuf, nice lovely, to meet you, come on in. Lovely to meet you too, thank you. I'm excited for this. Yeah, me too. Morgan is an ecologist who dedicates up to five nights a week to monitoring local bat populations, along with the help of volunteers. Bats are among the UK's most threatened animals, with some being critically endangered. Along with Morgan and her team, I'm heading to an urban woodland just outside of Birmingham, in the hopes of seeing some bats up close and collecting some data that will help their conservation. First up is checking the bat boxes. Right, so we've arrived at one of the bat boxes. Yep. What is it that we have to do now? Um, well, we need to find out if there's anything in there. Some yeah. of the bat boxes are open and we can check with a torch, mm -hmm. but this one we're gonna have to climb up um, and check it with a ladder. Um, so you'll climb the ladder, check the box. If there's any bats inside, put the lid straight back on the box and we're gonna put a little stuffy um, bag in there and then bring them down and see what we got. Brilliant, let's get the ladder. Yeah. Cool. It's a bit wobbly, but apparently it's supposed to be wobbly, so... Right. Perfect. Oh, you got a bat? There's a bat in there. Door back oh, on. Oh, wow. Okay. Carefully put that back on. Yep, and you need to put one of the little bags in the hole. Okay, I've got a bag in my pocket, so this is just going to block the hole. Yep. So that it can't fly out. You. We've got a bat. Good job. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Right. <sighs> Is that the bats we can hear? Yeah. So you can wow. you can hear him? Yeah. Come on. So the first thing that we're gonna do is a swabbing. So you need to get that inside their mouths. Yeah. And this and is a nocturnal bat. This is a nocturnal bat. Okay. It's our biggest species in the UK. Yeah. Nocturnal bats call at a lower frequency that can be heard by some humans. We still have a lot to learn about this species, which is why the next part of Morgan's research so is so important. Look at those teeth. I know, seven, eight, nine, Ooh. ten. Right, we are sampling for where the scissors gone. Volatile chemicals. As well as being really good um, communicators with sound, um, bats are also really good communicators with smell. Um, but not much work has been done looking at the composition of the chemicals that they use for signaling. Right. And these big glands, are they can be quite stinky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they have a lot of chemicals and they, they've been observed to um, actually rub them on roost entrances. To, okay. To, um, and, and they have a quite a unique mating style, these bats. We'll have a harem and so chemical signaling is really important to the males in attracting females yeah maybe even deterring other males we really don't know much oh, about wow. it so um let me just pinch him from you scott bat numbers in the uk crashed over the last century and although some species have started to recover they're still threatened by things like habitat loss climate change and falling insect numbers so i'm really interested in finding out how bats are doing in busy urban areas like this one so in terms of the bat populations, the urban bats that we have here, are they healthier than the other bats that you get? Or does, does That's living in actually that really urban... interesting. What you'll see in a minute is um, that Tasha and Beck are going to be weighing and measuring the bat. And over the last yes, six years of doing this, we've taken our data set and compared it to a similar data set, same part of the world, Herefordshire, just, just not too far yeah, away, yeah, but mostly far. mostly rural. Okay. Um, and we found that in all in, in the five species that we looked at, four of them were bigger in urban environments. Really? And, and that seems to kind of go against it because you yeah. think maybe it's not such good habitat. Exactly. And we think there might be quite a few things at play. One, um, 
in, in urban areas, there's not the widespread agricultural um, use of pesticides. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The other thing is the urban heat island effect, which means that they can maybe come out of hibernation a yeah. little earlier, yeah. get a little bit more food in before it's time for them to have babies. So there's actually potentially a few benefits of living in an urban area. Yeah, from their point of view. There's yeah. also a greater heterogeneity of habitat, so it's more like a mosaic rather yeah. than all being the same crop. Okay, which is so good for them. So wider, a wider range of insects to feed on. Very true, yeah. very true. Yeah. Now that we've collected the data we need, it's my job to return the box back to its tree, ready for another bat. Like that? I'm so happy that we found that nocturnal bat. I've never seen a bat up close like that before. Oh, I'm quite high up. I didn't realise I was this high up. Now we have to wait until nightfall so that we can come back, set up a few traps and do something called a net survey. But before that, I wanted to ask Morgan a few questions about her work. Right. Here we are, in Marion's yeah. Wood. Now, Morgan, what I really want to know is why do you love bats so much? I... Big question. Yeah, it is a huge <laughs> question because, I, um, you know, I do bats all day, every day, pretty much, and all night. Um, I think... To an extent, it's because I feel that they are kind of unsung species that people are they often vilify because of the media and maybe even sort of you know cultural mythology they associate them with things that are creepy and they they are desperately in need of our conservation efforts 40 percent of bat species are of conservation right. concern so they're endangered vulnerable near threatened etc but they're an understudied group they play vital roles in the ecosystem and they are in trouble and with climate change they're going to be more in trouble and so anything that we can learn about them is, is important. And the type of surveys that we're doing today, sort of trapping and bat box checks, that just gives us information about, you know, what sex the bats are, how old they are, are they breeding here? How would you like the public's perception of bats to change in the future? For the better, <laughs> obviously. I would like to see bats vilified less and championed more. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we don't, we don't protect what we don't value and we don't value what we don't know about. Yeah. And that's where it starts, education. Brilliant, yeah, yeah. no, I fully agree. Bats yeah. are awesome. With night falling quickly, it's time to start our next round of surveys. Morgan wants to find out which bats are hunting in the woods at night, and bat traps are one of the best ways of doing that. The first type of trap we're setting up is called a mist trap, formed of multiple nylon strings in which the bat gets tangled. Whilst we wait and see whether anything flies into the first trap, I go with Morgan to set up a harp trap nearby which works by catching bats as they fly into its strings and tumble into the bag below. We've just set up the traps and now we're going to head back to base camp and it's basically just a waiting game now until we get the call that we've caught our first bat. So, wish us luck. Wow, look at that bat. So we lower it down so that the bat is kind of at elbow height. Okay. Oh wow. It's a girl. And this is not an echolocation call, this is a... This is a... Don't touch me! Don't yeah. touch me call. <laughs> it really is like Christmas. Okay. Once we catch our first nocturnal, the other species begin appearing thick and fast. So this is a brown long-eared bat. It is a brown long-eared bat. You can definitely tell, that's, that's one I can ID. Look at those ears! Oh wow. As opposed to the nocturnal, the brown long-eared bat is known as the whispering bat, because its call is so quiet. This little bat's huge ears make it an expert at hunting woodland insects through echolocation. It is weighed, examined, measured, and then is ready for release. Ready? Wow. There you go. There she goes. Yep. So we've just finished collecting up all the data on the bats and I've honestly had an amazing day today. I've absolutely loved it. I've learned more about bats than I ever thought I would and it's just incredible to think that while all this is happening, all this research is going on, the rest of the city is just asleep, sleep in their beds. I feel like I've had a real glimpse into a secret world.